we have one, two, three guests. Um, so we have let's see, Ibrahim, uh, Michael Maragni, and Sharman Levy. Welcome. Uh, this is the Trusted Referral Network. Uh, we are a network of uh, marketing and sales services providers uh, around the country uh, and a couple of sponsors as well who provide either services or products to the marketing world. Um, John Stammel, for example, is a services provider. Therefore, I'm sorry, he's a sponsor, a technology provider. Um, we meet weekly um, on Tuesday afternoons, Eastern at 5 p.m. and Wednesday mornings the following week at, um, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, that enables folks on the West Coast to join. Uh, we've even, even had some visitors from Europe um, who come uh, usually on the Wednesday morning. And um, the objective of the, of the group is uh, because we're all niche providers, um, there's opportunities for us to collaborate, refer business. Um, but first, you got to get to know people, right? So we're all marketers. The idea is that we should understand at least a little bit more about what the others do when they explain it to us and what differentiates them. Um, more so perhaps, uh, and have opportunities to make referrals more so perhaps than a general marketing, a, a general networking group that might have, you know, financial planners and lawyers and acupuncturists and whatever else. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we do have a website. It's a directory website. Um, if you haven't been to it, it is trustref.net. Um, T-R-U-S-T-R-E-F.net as in trusted referral network. Um, when you become a member, if and when you become a member, um, we do have a trial membership, uh, which is three months, uh, and you get a full listing. You come to as many meetings as you'd like to see if it's for you, and then you could join. It's 360 a year for the standard membership. Um, there are add-ons, uh, which would mean extra listings, or there's higher levels for listings, but I think most people will probably start at the 360. Um, and we will start, uh, we are probably launching our first chapter um, sometime in the next couple of months, uh, based out of the San Francisco area, um, to be led by David Libby. Uh, had our conversation yesterday about that to help define what those chapters will be, but they'll likely be um, category exclusive so that you can be the only, uh, in John's case, uh, yeah, ghostwriter or video video marketer in the group. Um, so the, the group, the chapter will define the, and, and invite people who uh, uh, for, for those open seats. So let's get started. Um, Thank you all for coming again. John Stammel, um, who offers a very interesting technology uh, a company called, is it Umiji? Is that the, that's yeah. the correct pronunciation? Okay. Um, by the way, we'll do the 15 minutes or whatever it is. Uh, you don't have to use all 15 minutes. Um, and then um, we will switch to uh, a mode of just going around introducing ourselves. Um, I'm going to put a timer on if I could find the timer. Again, it's a little bit funky in that I haven't used. All right, let me see if I move this up here. Is that going to change anything? No, got to find the uh, the apps. Let me see if I could find the apps. I don't see them. All right, so I may just I usually have, hold on, one more shot at this. I don't see my timer app. Okay, so I'll just put it, I'll use my phone and I will drop you back down here where I can look at you all because my camera's on my laptop. Um, so yeah, take uh, 15 minutes, uh, up to 15 minutes if folks have questions. John, do you want them to ask questions right in the, um, uh, while you're speaking or would you rather have them put uh, in, you know questions in the chat? How would you like people to do it? Um, I think you can feel free to interrupt, ask questions while um, while I'm going. That's fine. Okay. And you should be able to share the screen. I'll give you the five-minute warning if, in fact, it takes more than 10 minutes. 
Okay. And Michael, I think I owe you $360. Okay. Um, I will send you the, uh, you should, you should be able to log in and just go to your account. Um, but I'll send you, a, I just put together a, uh, instructions form for how to do that easily. Okay. All right. All right. So, so um, by, by way of background, um, my career has mostly been in marketing communications. I owned an advertising agency for um, 20 years. We did a lot of national and international work. And um, uh, we had about 90 employees and around 30 million in annual uh, billings. And in the process of owning that, we commissioned a lot of market research. And um, the researchers would always come back to us with a generic study about a particular group. And I would always ask the same two questions. The first one would be, you've told us what this group believes. Now, could you tell us why they believe it? And they would say, no, we can't, but we'd have to have focus groups in order to do that. Um, the second question was, well, did you append uh, any of the responses that uh, you got from people to database files? And again, they would say, no, that uh, they hadn't done that. So what I always wanted to do was build a platform that would enable brands to learn the why behind what people believe and also would append any information, both closed-ended and open-ended information, including language, to database files so that brands could segment them by any uh, criteria. And I'm, I'm going to share my screen, and I will show you uh, a little bit about how that works. And I think what I'm going to do is just give you a an overview of the platform, how it's constructed, and then I'm going to focus on those things that are different from other platforms that are out there. And um, what I think is in my in my 15 second view of uh, Odoo, um, what what makes us different overall there as as well. Um, so the platform is built around five functions that are typically bought separately. And now one of the things you tend to see about a lot of platforms. And actually, when I looked at uh, Odoo, let me just go to there a second. There are, you know, oh my God, there's a lot. You know, I don't know what's going on here. There's so much stuff. And this is typical of a lot of platforms. And it's also the kind of thing you see, you know, when you go to like HubSpot or Salesforce's drop down upon drop down upon drop down. Well, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to simplify and really distill it down to a basic function, was, which is building out customers' personas and then being able to segment them based on any information that's in their persona. And that's what the platform does. So you won't see a lot of drop downs. There are a few here, but you won't see a lot. So there are five areas. Contacts is our version of CRM. Um, acquire is where you build landing pages and you can measure the productivity of any tactic. Understand is a full market research platform. Uh, we call it conversations. I'll give you a quick look at that and tell you what's different there. Engage is a full email uh, marketing platform. And then measure is the net promoter score. And you can uh, create segments from any part of the platform. You can pick them up in other parts of the platform. So the whole idea is just to make it easy, focused, and simple to use. Um, if I go to contacts, that was the, this is the, uh, why did I, I wasn't logged in. Let me quickly log in. <clears throat> okay. This is, the, this is the dashboard, which I'm not going to spend much time in here. It just gives you a top line. This client has uh, 12,000 people in their database. And you can see when they've run acquisition campaigns and then when it's kind of uh, they're, 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 they're due for another acquisition campaign. Uh, one of the other th things I will point out here is that we, we already know from the initial information that we get from people that um, this is a port wine uh, a client that 85% of their database is interested in food and port wine, uh, about 10, 9% interested in travel to Portugal, um, around 5% in just general news, and then a small percentage in history of the product. And it goes down and it gives you a top line on every section, but I'm gonna give you a quick 
look at each of the sections. So the contact section, so this is our version of a CRM, but it's it's designed for consumers. And it gives you all of the say, that same kind of information where your database is, geographical interest, experience, age, all of that kind of stuff. And again, and you can segment here and we can create uh, any kind of a segment. We have all of these uh, segments that are, are already created. Uh, if I wanna go back and create a segment, um, I can select any or all. Uh, and then for example, I'll select, um, uh, well, uh, John Parsons is in Washington. So let's do Washington. And uh, I have no idea whether there's anyone there, but let's get people that are in Washington that have a primary interest in food and port. And we'll take a look at that. And there are 206 uh, people. And then what happens is all of the uh, graphs change right away. So we get a picture of that segment. We can we can save that segment and pick it up in a different segment if we want. Now, the other thing, and I know some people, Michael, you've seen this before, and John, you have. Um, one of the things that we've added is a lot of platform integrations. So one of the things people used to say is, hey, I'm using HubSpot now. I don't want to leave them uh, completely, or I'm using MailChimp or whatever. So you can import or export from any of these different uh, platforms, and we keep adding more platforms uh, as well. Um, you can bring in purchase information uh, from Shopify or from Big Commerce that's used by a lot of retailers. So there's a lot of flexibility as to what you can do um, on the platform. And now going back, uh, I'm going to go, we'll take a quick look at the acquire section. Um, and I know I'm being really quick here. Um, so this is where you would build landing pages. It's all forms based. Here's a landing page. Oops. Here's a landing page that this client uh, built, and it asks for all the usual information. But then when people sign up to follow a brand, that's a great time to ask a few questions. So it asks what's your primary interest, whether it's news, history, food, or travel. You saw the chart that showed us what they were. And then this client wanted to know about how familiar people are with the product, whether they've used it before or whatever, and then whether they're consumer trade or media. And then they get a welcome email uh, that's automatically generated uh, right after that. What I really like about the acquire section, however, is that you can measure, and this is another point of difference, you can measure the productivity of any tactic that you might have in your marketing portfolio. For example, this client ran some ads in Wine Spectator. And at the same time, they used a acquisition company called uh, Zito. And uh, you can see Zito was a dud and um, Wine Spectator did pretty well for them. There's an old axiom in advertising, which says that uh, half my advertising budget is wasted, I just don't know which half. And here you know exactly which half uh, is wasted. And then we can create a segment just off the people that responded to the advertising. We can see how much information we got. And then if you wanna follow up just with this group to sell them something, make an offer, invite them to an event, that can be done. The understand section is a full market research uh, platform and we can, create conversations, a single question in email. We can do multiple questions. We call them conversations because as some of you may know, every uh, client wants to ask their, uh, their customers 30 questions and people just drop out. They just stop uh, answering questions uh, at a certain point. We have all these kinds of questions that are hard coded and all, it, all you have to do is, is um, put in uh, the response, and this one is an open-ended and this will collect language. So then if we, if we go back here and just to show you another difference is that um, one of the 
we have some AI that's coded in here. Where do people shop? And so it's picking up the names of stores. Um, here we have a little bit of a different approach. This question was, what would you like to know more about port wine? An open-ended question. And here if we go down and uh, this is a version of a word cloud. You can see that AI has grouped some of the words here, different styles, different types. If I click on a word like history, now I can see the actual language that every customer used in talking about uh, the client's product. And I can see things in here that I can then search for to see how common they came up as, as well. And like in every other part of the platform, I can create a segment. I can segment by any or all, and I can segment by any response to a question uh, that was asked in this short survey. And then I can also add database fields here as well. And this means I don't have to ask them their name. I don't have to ask them their email. I don't have to ask them what their primary interest is because I already have all of that information. I can save them as a segment. And then I go to the engage section and this is where I can pick them up uh, in uh, there by just uh, identifying uh, which segment I'm looking for. And I can pick any uh, anything here so I can get different types of people. These are all segments that the client already created. And we can create an email template, uh, edit it. Um, here's an example. We'll just take a look at this one. This is a newsletter they have. And we can just pop in the new photos and new text. And it's very easy to send those uh, out. Um, then just as with any email, I can, I can schedule it. And then I can see what the uh, performance uh, was uh, of it. And actually let's look at saved reports. And when we then look at, we get all of the data that you would expect to get in terms of opens and clicks. And then we can also, again, we're always building out personas. What did people respond to? What events did they attend or want to know more about? So uh, this was a game that the uh, client offered. And so we can I isolate any of the people that clicked on any part of that newsletter that you just saw and, uh, and then follow up with those people. And then the last thing I'm going to show you here is the Net Promoter Score. If you've never used Net Promoter Scores before, it's two questions. The first question is, um, what um, on, a zero, on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend our port wines to a friend or a colleague? And then once you give them the rating, then they want to know what's the primary reason for your score. Now, this client had never done it before. And um, they told us uh, that they were interested in doing it. Um, and they were looking for uh, brand, whoops, they were looking for brand ambassadors and how can they use Net Promoter Score for brand ambassadors? So we took a look at this in a meeting with them and we said, let's look at the language that people use. And here we saw love. We thought that was a pretty interesting word. And so then we went and we took a look at the actual language that people use and people go crazy over their product. And this person went really went nuts about how much they love it. And so I said to them, look, if somebody says they love your product and they gave you a ranking of a nine or a 10, which is considered a promoter, um, that's gonna be a pretty good prospect for a brand ambassador. So let's create a segment of those people and we'll go to all so that they feel they qualify for both. And then we go to comment and I'm just gonna write in love and it's gonna look for any comments where the word love was used. And then I'm going to select their um, group. We want promoters, nines and tens only. We want to view them. And we got 58 people. Now, so I said, look, there's your there's your group. We 
uh, Save Them as a segment. And uh, they put together their brand ambassador program, uh, which I think is a t-shirt, a hat, an invitation to an event. Uh, you can't uh, give discounts to wine, so they couldn't do that. Um, and then within a week, 49 people responded, said, I'd love to be a brand ambassador. So now you have people wearing the t-shirts and the hats and that kind of thing. So that's a good example of how the platform looks for how do you talk about certain things? What are your perceptions? What are you interested in? And then responding to them uh, based on exactly what they've said to you. And it really tries to mimic the kind of exchange that goes on in a retail store where a customer goes in, talks to a salesperson, the salesperson asks questions about what are you looking for, what's your experience been, and then is able to guide the sale personally. And so using these digital tools that are all integrated uh, here, and you can go from one to the next, you can really do that same kind of action. And that's the platform, happy to answer any questions that you've got. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, so what do you, how do you define, do you call it a client, a customer engagement platform or a customer research platform? Or I think that's. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. I've been calling it a customer, customer insights activation platform. Now, the problem is that people want to compartmentalize you in whatever it is. So they tend to say, uh, oh, well, we have MailChimp, so we have email. Well, you can keep MailChimp because of the integrations, but you don't really need it because you can use our uh, email platform. Or they might say, oh, well, we use SurveyMonkey for market research. Well, okay, but you're not appending that research to any database file. So it's really, I think that the challenge we have is, is one that falls under category design and getting people out of their compartmentalization to start thinking differently and think about how do retail stores work and how do marketing departments work and how can we translate that into a digital environment, which is what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think once you explain it to people, it's very compelling, but it's also hard for them to get their head around because it is so unique. Uh, and do you, uh, do you get any business from market research, research aid, uh, companies? Um, we don't get work that has been su subcontracted to us. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that we have More referrals. We have in the, we we do get some referrals and we have gotten, you know, one of the things I always say is, look, we can do the market research for you, uh, but it's more than that because everything is going to get appended to a database file and then you'll get all of all of this additional information. Some people make use of that. Some people say, well, I'm only interested in the research. Um, we've actually turned down some research projects because of that too. Okay. Um, so you do know, um, trying to think of the guys does research uh, out in California in the group, or he was in the group. Um, his name escapes me. Um, Roger Brooks, you know, Roger? Um, yes, I think I have spoken to Roger um uh, in the past you know and one of the things like for someone like uh roger um we don't we don't have to meet the client or know the client right um i prefer not to frankly yeah uh, yeah <laughs> so what 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 we like to do is train train the client or train the agency to use the platform be available for consulting and problem solving uh and then have them go to town with the platform. And we've Great. got a few situations like that where we have agencies who are the clients uh, and then direct clients as well. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you had more to say than you thought. Okay. Uh, and if, anybody <laughs> wants, if anyone wants to follow up or they want to know more or they want to say, would it work in this situation or see the full demo, I'd be happy to do that. Yes. And I, uh, Faith, uh, you have a question? Where's your name come from? Stout. Um, um, it, there, there, it's a, there's a, it's a derivative of a Japanese word, omiji, which one of the uh, meanings is to get a view. Get a view. Very good. All right. Uh, quick question. Yeah, go ahead, Ibrahim. So what I'm understanding is that 
Umiji. Um, am I pronouncing right? Umiji? Yeah, that's right. Umiji. All right. So Umiji is mainly a source for primary research, right? It's for primary engagement with 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 using the research that you get to um, understand a brand's customers and engage them based on what you've learned about them. It's one to one marketing at scale. One to one marketing. All right. So and, and aside from the email, like the surveys would be shown on the websites as well, right? Yeah. By the way, that one to one marketing at scale is a is a good phrase um, that piques your interest, um, but also describes what you do. Um, and so, sorry. Okay. No, no, I was like, could you hypothetically sort of send these surveys to other people who are very similar to, let's say, my own customers or my own audience, yet don't frequent my website? If I'm still trying to understand, you know, the motivations and uh, understand the audience better, both of my current customers and of potential customers. Yes. So, so we we do have, uh, we have we have clients that have. We've got one client that's got a database of twelve thousand five hundred people, of which five thousand are buyers, and the. If I could do my math correctly, what are those? 7,000, 7,500. 7,500 don't buy and they have no idea why. So so what we've been doing is helping them understand why they're not buying. And then being able to put that information to work right away, to activate it so that they're get, sending the right message to the right person. Okay. All Thank right. you very much. Wonderful. So let's move on. Um, we uh, our next uh, uh, next uh, portion of our of our meeting is uh, going around. Everybody gets a chance uh, two to three minutes um, to speak briefly about what they do. Uh, John, of course, got fifteen minutes because he did the showcase. That's great. Uh, I'm going to start with um, I'll put it the order in which people showed up, more or less. So John Parsons, Lynn Donaldson, Ibrahim, uh, then Sharman, Faith. Michael, Rajiv, and then myself. Um, and I, again, I can't find my timer or my apps now. So I'm just going to put my phone on for uh, for three minutes and tell us what you do, um, what makes you different, how you can help others. And if you've got a particular ask, that would be great. Uh, and last but not least, how do we remember you? What's, what really makes you stand out? I'm going to put um everybody in speaker mode so that you get the full screen so um since that's driven by voice activation if the folks that are not speaking um could go on mute that would be great okay john parsons take it away thanks michael if you, if you want to know what makes me different you have to ask my wife so that's that's a that's a question i'm not going to answer here um I, i'm a ghostwriter of nonfiction books but i also through Twist of Fate, I guess. Um, one of the books I wrote in 2018 had over 300, almost 350 videos that we had to curate, edit, put into an interactive platform to, to go along with the book that it was, it was a college textbook. And as a result, um, my, my two sons are the designers slash videographers in the family. And they were, depending on who tells the story, they were either drafted or they volunteered um, to do that project with me. And as a result, we all decided that we would form a video production company. We, we felt we had all the tools necessary. So Into Ideas is a video marketing studio. Um, I still do the ghost writing. And as you can tell, I do the sales for our video side. But we do uh, affordable, high quality video for small businesses. We do a lot of work for authors. Uh, last week, I did a showcase on uh, the book trailers that we've been doing. They're little 90 second, 60 to 90 second movies about a book um, to promote that author's platform. And we do a variety of other kinds of things, mostly explainers. Um, the, the way we cut costs is that we do most of our video capture. If we're taking a subject a spokesman or, or a testimonial, we don't send a crew out or we don't hire a crew in a local area. Uh, we use people's devices 
to record the video and we, we can do so without lag because we don't depend on their Wi-Fi connection. We have a, well, it's not magic, but it feels like magic. Anyway, we record the video as many takes as we need. We, um, we upload that footage from their phones to the cloud, edit it, come up with the results. We do, we're doing an increasing amount of animation, um, not just mo moving titles and lower thirds, but um, infographic type in, in, um, animation. We're doing a book trailer now that is, I, I think it's hilarious because it's talking about business failures and my, my lead animators doing stick figure animation of somebody trying to push a boulder up the hill, um, which is part of the process that this author is um, talking about. And unsuccessfully because he's using a stick to push the boulder up the hill and it falls off and then he falls off the ramp. So it's um, trying to engage people with something something that asks the question, well, what does this book answer? And we do the same with um, small small businesses and tech companies where we try to ask, ask the question, what does this book or this technology or this process solve? What, what, what problem does it solve? And the, the goal, of course, is to get the viewer of the video to say, yeah, I, I have that question. Call the, call the person or buy the book or whatever it happens to be. So we're having a ball. We're doing, the, we're doing all, kinds of, all kinds of different videos. That's us. And I have my information in the chat, by the way. Did you put the link to some of your uh, the portfolio? That was interesting, that one that you sent me. Uh, no, by but the way, yeah, everybody should put their information in the chat. And I'll encourage folks to download the chat at the end. Uh, so that you can follow up, you'll know who was in the meeting. All right, sure. I'll do that. Uh, Lynn Donaldson, take it away. Lynn, are you with us? She's been quiet. Okay, um, who's next? I don't see her. Okay, did she drop off? Okay, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ibrahim. Uh, I have the good, good fortune to meet Michael back during a networking event by another uh, group called Marketing Minds. Uh, quickly right now, I'm in Egypt, so it's actually 12.40 a.m. over here. Well, actually, it's September 20th, like the next day. So yeah, part of the reason I'm blacked out or you can't see me is because I'm in my PJs right now. Like right after this call, I'm going to jump into bed. So I figured I'd send this call and then go get some sleep. Um, so I do content marketing. Um, I've worked most of my life in the Middle East. I was born in the States. We moved back to Cairo. Um, and then for the past, as I was telling Michael, for the past month or two, I've been contemplating going and living back in the States. So that's why I've been reaching out to different networking groups, uh, trying to learn more about the market over there, what people are doing. Um, about me. So I think I started off in content marketing and then I enjoyed the strategic element of it. So I grew within that field. Uh, now sort of I'm the head of content at Zeta, which is a SaaS tech company. And uh, I think that's the most of the spiel. Uh, I mean, I can't think of anything else to add right now, but yeah, sure. We'd love to hear from you guys. So do you also produce content in Arabic or French or is it all English? So most of the content I produce in English is in English. And that's merely for the reason that even though I do speak Arabic and French, for me, English is the one language that I'm more comfortable expressing myself in. I think it's just by virtue of actually growing up in the States. So I could speak English before speaking Arabic. And then over time, I picked up Arabic and French. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way to answer that. All right. And are, are you looking for anything in particular uh, from folks around the table? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah. Are you looking for anything? Do you have any asks? Uh, are you looking for any particular connections or uh, anything that else, anything that somebody in this group might be able to help you with? Not really. So right now where I'm at is because I'm starting off, where my head is at is uh, I'm building my own business and starting from the ground up so i think okay. having partners having people i could learn from people i can pair ideas with is definitely where i'm thinking and what i'm focused on at least for the first month or two uh but aside from that not necessarily at this moment though okay i know we have at least one other content person here uh, that would be faith thomasis who's a writer but we're going to go to Sharmin levy who was invited by sharita jackson Sarita Jackson. Yeah. 
Hi, so I am Charmon. I am a, a small business and nonprofit consultant. I primarily work with environmental and social impact organizations. Um, I work with a lot of businesses and nonprofits kind of from the ground up, helping them to build that that main foundation with their branding and communication and marketing strategies. Um, I also help them with operations and capacity building and basically everything that they need to get their organizations off the ground and um, try to help them get as much knowledge in those areas as possible. That is probably the one unique thing about me. I always say I, I train myself out of a job because I just want me to make sure everybody understands what they're doing and understands what's going on um, and allow them that autonomy in, in some bit. So I think my biggest ask, I just, I like to get to know people. I love to know what everybody else is doing. And so anybody that wants to connect or collaborate, collaboration is my, that's my thing. So, <laughs> so that's it for me. What type of, uh, do you, uh, since most of the people around the table are in the marketing world, what types of marketing sort of tactics do you typically employ for your customers or with the cooperation with others? Well, a lot of it is just um, partnerships. I work heavily in social media, really, and connecting and building community in that sense. Um, I work particularly in their local areas, helping them build the community there as instead of um, a broad range, I help them to kind of focus a bit more on their, their local areas as far as their marketing and their communication strategies. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Well, I guess, you know, do, do you work with printers for like flyers? Do you work with website developers for websites, uh, you know, designers, uh, cut writers, video people, that sort of thing. All of the above. All of the above. Yes. All right. Well, that's, uh, we have some of those around the table. So definitely uh, reach out to folks. And it looks like you've put, if you've put your information in the uh, uh, in the chat, then they'll have a chance to, to act, uh, contact you as well. Okay. Uh, Faith Thomas, Thomasus, Thomasus, get that right. You're up. Yes. Hi, um, I've met many of you. Nice to see you. Um, as Michael said, I'm a writer. And um, my point of difference is that I look at the big picture, the whole marketing communications, particularly from a branding point of view. So I work closely with graphics designers in the development of logo design, package design, um, and marketing materials, and I do a lot of brand strategy consulting with them what are we trying to say who are we trying to appeal to and help them develop that visually and then i come up with the words so i'm, I'm like a liaison and speak english and design but i'm not a designer and uh, that has evolved into a copywriting business and my strength there is really getting to the point very quickly which is imperative for web design uh, a web copy, because if you don't say what you have to say right away, you're losing the visitor. And um, that's evolved into a name development business, which is where I have a particular strength. And uh, because you have to be really concise and targeted with the positioning of the name, and you also have to deal with availability, uh, particularly with the uh, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And if it's good, it's taken. So we start from there. So um, I see uh, some of you would be good for me to get in touch with. So I look forward to linking up with you, John and I. We we were supposed to set up a date for September and we need to do that, John Stammel. So um, I've already talked to John Parsons. So anyway, um, that's me in a nutshell. And I put my info in the chat and I look forward to connecting. Thank you. and. Um, Faith, uh, if you're in the New York area, she's the one that came up with the name of Icon from Icon Parking. Um, so she is an icon in the naming in the naming world. <laughs> All right, Michael Maragni. Hello, Maran Marani, I guess right if it's pronounced correctly. You got it. <laughs> All right, go for it. 
Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mike. Uh, I'm a branding designer and a motion graphics artist. And I guess what sets me apart is uh, I try to kind of put put things uh, into motion as as often and <laughs> and uh, always as I can. Um, I, I feel like short, short form content and short form um, animation really, uh, really, uh, you know, kind of kind of speaks for a brand in a different way than uh, just a logo or 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 copy would I, I think uh, video itself is is a new frontier kind of that needs to be explored in every in every uh, every spot that it can be in a brand so I do uh, lots of animation lots of logo animation and um uh, I guess the only ask that I would have is uh, to yeah to meet people and uh, collaborate where I can because um, I I would I'd love to get to uh, you know get some get some more work <laughs> more work on my portfolio more work. Can you uh, can you show us a couple of your animations? You have about a minute forty six left. Okay, uh, let's share the, see. Share the screen. You can share the screen. Let's see. Let me share the screen. Where are we at? Um, hold up. Use Zoom in quite a while. <laughs> um, you happen to know where that share the screen button is? On the bottom, it should be on the bottom. There's a blue. Uh, if it's if you're a big enough screen, oh, yeah, 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 screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. select the yeah. window or the screen. Let's select this guy. Okay. All right. Well, this is the one that I did recently, an exploration of uh, Subaru's brand that I uh, really enjoyed doing. It's it, I I I feel like motion just always always gives like a like a completely different a completely different like style and feel to to a brand than. And static imagery ever does. I mean, it's nice to to combine the two, but for the most part, what is that over here? This was a spot for uh, the women's national team. Unfortunately, right before they they lost <laughs> and were knocked out of the tournament. But um, again, another uh, motion design project. Hey. And, and, how much time do I got left? Six seconds. Do one more. I can share one more. Oh, I'll hit this one. And it lets me. Uh, it's not letting me get the number. Anyways, that was a that was for time. Yeah, this is Kiwi Farm. This was uh yeah, Kiwi Farms. I, I've I've worked a bunch with Apple News Plus, and they uh, they uh, give us their um, their magazine covers, their their uh, you know editorial work, and uh, we put it to motion. So that's one of them there. Very cool. but, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, sure thing. That's great. Um, so definitely put your information in the chat, and uh, as, again, we'll uh, everybody will save it at the end. Rajiv. Rajiv, are you still here? Did he drop? He might have dropped. Uh, Lynn, I see Lynn has a window, but I don't... Lynn, are you still there? All right. We will uh, skip Rajiv and Lynn. Um, we do have a little bit of time left, uh, about 10 minutes. Um, does anybody have any uh, anything to add about uh, perhaps any recent uh, connections they've made through the network or given any connections um, that have helped or not helped. Um, I know, John, I um, referred you to a couple of people who do book publications. I'm going to switch back to the, um, to the gallery mode. Um, and yeah, we've, I, we've just started. There hasn't been any real connection yet. Just right. Just a flow and we'll get together sometime. Right, right. Um, and that's, you know, it's always helpful to uh, to do these presentations because it definitely puts, you know, leaves in your mind a much more in 
indelible image of what people do. So John uh, gave the presentation uh, last week, and uh, that just you know spurred some ideas of, of people who I know are in the book marketing world. Uh, so that's what I encourage folks to do is, is use this as a foundation for connecting with a couple of people, decide who you want to follow up with, do a one-on-one, -on -one, get to really know what they do, um, and uh, and also bring guests. Um, oh, Nick, Nicholas, did you? How did you fall off the radar? Nicholas, you forgot Nicholas. Nicholas, go for it. Hi, my name is Nicholas Rontanini. I'm currently an innovation lab producer at R Square Media, working uh, with Rajiv and Lynn. I've I'm an original content creation, uh, uh, original content creator. I've created uh, articles and videos for R Square Media, Connect A Strategy, a Lily Launch Tools, Cash Map Consulting, Adelphi University. I've created content for many different, many different corporations and companies. I've I've been around the block a few times, so I know what I'm doing. And if you're looking for someone who will who can who's able to create original content to match your brand identity then i'm your guy what when you say content you mentioned video uh what other types of content are you referring to i've i've worked with uh like um, my background is in video production and writing i've worked at my uh college newspaper where i was the editor-in-chief so i'm able so i've uh, work mainly in video production and blog creation. Okay, video and blogs. Okay, wonderful. And are you? Do you consider yourself freelance or? Um, yeah, I can do freelance work. Yeah. Okay. And do you, and it looks like you do you partner with other agencies? Uh, I I've worked. I mean, I, I'm working with uh, Rajiv and Lynn. Okay. So, yes. I, I know you're doing work for them, but are they doing work for their clients as well? Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. So you're partnering with agencies. All right. Wonderful. All right. Um, so I'll go back to my original question. Anything, um, any any thank yous, any acknowledgements, any uh, any thoughts uh, people want to share? Yeah, I do have an, a question I'd like to ask of the group. Sure. So Every time I come to a networking event, I'm always trying to not just see with whom I can collaborate, but I always want to see how I can be better as a marketer. So I want to suggest why doesn't everybody drop in the chat maybe one of their favorite resources that made them a better marketer? Like maybe it's a book, maybe it's an online course, whatever it may be, but something that you feel the rest of the group would benefit from and would be all the better for it. How does that sound? Absolutely. So ideas for your own experience, what made you a better marketer? Um, drop it in the chat and that could be a, a discussion point. I'll go to the bottom. Can I, can I be self-serving and recommend my own book? Sure. <laughs> uh, I think it's still, I think it's still available many years after written. Anyway. Yeah, put it put it in the uh, put it in the chat. And John, right. by the way, John Parsons had a uh, question. Are you have an ask for the for the group. John, you're on mute. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sorry. I, I'm putting I'm putting a, a book recommendation in there, but the, it'll wait. No, this is an unrelated question. Does anyone know of a good app for Zoom that does polling questions? Because we. Z Zoom itself does. I mean, do, Zoom has a polling feature. Uh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, but you have to set it up in advance of the call. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, for your meeting. Um, and there may be other apps. I mean, their app market is growing. Um, so you could look in their app market. They don't seem to promote it all that much. Um. I, when I start my Zooms, I usually have the app window or the app um, menu open, but for some reason it didn't open today. So that's why I didn't use the timer. Um, Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore. Absolutely. Uh, great book. Uh, and John, did you put yours in there? John Stammel, that is? 
I did. I don't. Again, I don't. I haven't looked in a while. Um, it I, it when it first came out, but this goes back more than ten years. Um, it sold twenty thousand copies right off. But uh, a year later, I saw it remaindered in Walmart. Remaindered which, in Walmart, which is which is a good way to bring your ego down. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, no, I see your LinkedIn. I, did you hit return when you put it in, or did you send it to everybody? Because I don't think I see it. The, the LinkedIn. No, no, no. I see your LinkedIn portfolio, but I don't see. I oh, don't see. oh, I think I just uh, I was for some reason I was disconnected to Faith. I got to put everybody here. Yes. Like, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's oftentimes either you don't hit return or you send it to somebody. Right, uh, everyone should have it now. Celebrate your mistakes. Wonderful. All right. Good. Uh, now's a great time to save the chat. So if you go to the chat window in the very bottom, there's a couple of icons. The last one uh, is uh, three dots. If you hit more and hit save chat, that will save it to your Zoom folder under documents. Um, so you'll know how to get in touch with people. Um, if you... Uh, want to reach out to me if you have an interest in coming back if you're a guest i'm sorry if you're a guest and want to come back um uh, let me know uh, you may already have the link um we tell people come come to the meeting try it out for a couple you know one or two times if you think it's a good fit um you can join uh with a trial membership uh, which is three months uh come to as many meetings as you like uh, and try to connect with as many people. And if that is valuable for you, then it's 360 a year. Um, John, I'll send you the, uh, um, uh, the instructions for how to, how to upgrade and faith are, do I, have you, uh, upgraded yet? I'm not sure if you have, I'll, I can send that to you as well. Great. All right. Thank you all. Um, Lynn, we didn't, we didn't get to hear from you. I apologize for the noise in the background. Um, and, uh, I will uh, be posting this of course, as I always do. And, uh, with a link from the newsletter, uh, and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you so Take much. Care. Man. Absolutely. <laughs> see ya. Take Bye -bye. care. Have a great